God bless you, my beloved. Thank you for joining us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. I'm Bishop Ramon De Maria. I'm the senior pastor of the church. My beloved, before we get started, let me please ask you to subscribe to our channel and like us. That way you will get post notifications of when we post something on YouTube. God bless you and thank you in advance. Today we will start a new message series titled Heaven, the Presence of Love or Heaven, the Abode of of love. This will be part one. Our scripture will be from the book of Revelation chapter 22 and verse 15, which reads as follows from the King James Version, For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. The Good News Bible renders it, But outside the city are the perverts, and those who practice magic, the immoral, and the murderers, those who worship idols, those who are liars, both in words and deeds. My beloved, there are those who say they're going to heaven, but have no concept of what is needed to get there. Most think that everyone goes to heaven. This is a universal mindset. Some think they can work their way to heaven. Some think that joining or belonging to a church gets them to heaven. Well, my beloved, a word for those today is that they are wrong. They are wrong 100%. And one day, when they die, they will open their eyes and they will wake up in torment. Some say that there will be no lawyers, car dealers, or politicians in heaven. But this is not true. The only ones that will be in heaven are those who are covered in the saving blood of Jesus Christ. These are called redeemed saints or true Christians because they have repented, turned from their sinfulness, and received Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21 reads, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. My beloved, there's no other way to get to heaven but through Jesus Christ. Amen? And everyone here in our church knows that because this is what we preach, how to get to heaven. To get to heaven, you must repent. To get to hell, you don't have to do anything. So where do you believe you are going to spend eternity? I pray that it is in heaven. My beloved, Matthew 7 and 21 should awaken and alarm those who feel no shame or regret about their sins. These are what we call the unrepentant. Sinners have no part in heaven because they have not repented. They are not righteous. They are evil. They are wicked. They do not care about anything good while on earth except the lust of this pleasant joy that they have, the pleasant joy of living in sin. A lot of people love sin. They love sinfulness. They love drinking, drunkenness, drugs, pornography. They, they love the horoscope. They love these things. They have joy in them. But these are doors for them to go to hell. Sinners are wicked haters of God and Christ and all that is good and pure. Sinners are under the power of the spirit of enmity against all that is good and therefore shall never taste the goodness and love of heaven. They shall never enter into a heavenly rest, but shall abide in the torments of hell for eternity. Church will not save you from the pit of hell. So let's examine our scripture today, my beloved. Matthew 7 and 21, our first scripture. It says, not everyone. The sense here is that no person by merely acknowledging God's authority. A lot of people know that there is a God, and they know that God is powerful, but they don't pay heed to the things of God. They believe that there are three persons in God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, but they don't profess faith in God through Jesus Christ. They know that there's merit in doing good things to people, but they refuse to do it to the praise and glory of God. There are many ministers out there that do things for their own praise and their own glory and leave God out of the whole thing. This should not be. They shall not have any part with God or Christ in glory. Only those that do the will of the Father. He who gets a bad tree rooted up, the good tree planted, and continues to bring forth fruit to the glory and praise of God, will be in heaven. See, you have to root yourself up from the rudiments of this world and be transplanted in the kingdom of God. If you're not, you have no part of the kingdom of God. You must take your roots out of the things of this world and plant them, replant it in the things of God. This is what you call being born again. 
You were born in sin, shaped in inequity. And the only thing that will change that is faith in Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. And he can only be your Savior and Lord if you repent of your sins. My beloved, let me say this, and I'm going to say it with all sincerity. There is no rest in hell. Your buddies here on earth won't be your buddies there. You will hate one another. You will despise one another. And this will happen for all eternity. I can't say enough about the torment of hell. I can preach the rest of my life about the torments of hell. No matter how much I preach it, there will be people that will shrug it off. They'll laugh about it. They'll call me names. They'll say I'm some fanatic. They'll turn me off. But that won't change the fact that the only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. <laughs> you can't get to heaven through me, only through Jesus Christ. But you can listen to the message that I'm preaching because I preach Jesus Christ and him crucified. The Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the one that died for your sins, the one whose cleansing blood is the only thing that can save you. Just meditate on that today. Let's go to our other opening verse today. I just gave you the what we say, the icing on the cake. Now we're going to get into the flavor, to the taste of the cake. Because a lot of people are hearing me today, but they're looking for something else for another way. I am going to show you the right way. I'm going to give you the right flavor, the right taste, that it takes for you to enjoy happiness for all eternity in the kingdom of God. So you can either listen or not listen. I would like to encourage you to listen to what the Word of God wants to say to you today. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 12 reads from the King James Version, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. The Good News Bible renders it. Listen, says Jesus, I am coming soon. I will bring my rewards with me to give to each one according to what he has done. This is very important, my beloved. Listen, drop everything that you're doing and pay attention, please. Talks about, and behold, I come quickly. There are no doubt words that were spoken. These words undoubtedly were spoken by Jesus Christ. No one else. You know, on the island of Patmos, the apostle John wrote as he was spoken to. He wrote word for word. Nothing added, nothing taken away. And this is what he is passing on to us today. He is coming quickly, which means he is coming soon. Will you be ready to meet him today? Should he come, what will you hear him say? Come in or depart. He is going to return because he said he is going to return. My beloved, you can never change the fact that he is going to come. And when he comes, the judgment will be passed on to every creature, every man. On the unjust, the filthy, and the righteous, and the holy, everyone will be judged. They will be judged either guilty or innocent. The design of this seems to be to impress on the mind the solemnness of the truth that the condition hereafter will soon be fixed and to lead people to prepare for it. The way you are found is the way you will be judged and that will not change. You cannot repent once Jesus comes back. You must repent before he comes back. You must be born again before he comes back. If not, you will not have another opportunity. In reference to each individual, the period is near when it's to be determined whether he will be holy or sinful for all eternity. Christ is going to come, and if you're not ready, you won't have time to change. He's going to come in the twinkling of an eye, at the sound of the trump, the trumpet of God. You won't have time. You can't think that fast. You can't prepare that fast. Now I'm talking about the rapture now. Do you want to be here on earth after the rapture? Once the rapture takes place, the saints go up. The dead in Christ rise. And there will be people left here. And there will be so much chaos on this earth. The first thing they're going to do is what, my beloved? Just like they do now, blame Christians for everything that happens. But there will not be any true Christians here to blame. But those that proclaim to be Christians and were not Christians will be left behind. And they will suffer. They will suffer or take the mark of the beast. And then all hell will break loose here on earth. And Jesus says, and my reward is with me. He says, I bring it with me to give to every man, either life or death, heaven or hell, the crown or the curse. He will be prepared immediately 
to execute the sentence. Guilty, 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 guilty. Not guilty, not guilty, not guilty, not guilty. What were you here? Should Jesus come back? To give to every man according as his work shall be. What are you sowing in this life? And what are you reaping in this life? Are you sowing to sin, which is hate for God and Christ and everything about Christianity? Are you sowing hell? Which one are you sowing? Are you sowing murder, contempt, evilness? What are you sowing in this life? You will be judged immediately when Jesus Christ returns. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 13 says, I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. That is from the King James Version. From the Good News Bible it reads, I'm the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Everything exists in Christ. Christ is eternal. Christ is the Word of God that became flesh. In the beginning, God said, let there be light. That's God's Word. And then when we go to John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. You cannot change that anyway, no matter whether you believe it or not. God's Word is eternal, and it will not change. The idea here in this verse is that He will therefore show that He is the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He originated the whole plan of salvation, and He will determine its close. He formed the world, and He will wind up its affairs. In the beginning, the continuance, and the end. He will be recognized as the same being presiding over and controlling all things. My beloved, I pray that you are listening so far today, and that you will heed this message. Because if you don't, you will hear Jesus say, Depart from me, I never knew you. You know, all through my life here, I have heard people say to others, Go to hell. To hell with this. To hell with that. Not fully understanding what is meant by hell. They're telling people, go to torment. Be eternally out of the sight of God. But they don't understand because it is a saying that people adapt to. You know, you don't have the right to even use that phrase, go to hell. You don't even have the right. Only God has that right, not you. You will be judged by every idle word that you speak. How are you going to fare in the judgment? See, your words will either set you free or condemn you. Why not compliment people? Why not encourage people instead of damning people to hell? Why? Why must you have such a negative attitude about your life? Evil thoughts in your life. You can change your life around today and be born again. Become new. Change your soul. Change your eternal destiny by repenting and receiving Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. And that's the opportunity I want to offer you today. All of us here in the church have taken that same step and have eternal life, which means we are born again in Christ, through Christ, by Christ. We desire to spend eternity in heaven, not in hell. And if you want to spend eternity in heaven, there is a protocol. But if you want to spend eternity in hell, don't do anything. Turn off this video. Just go to hell when you leave this life. But I want to encourage you today to take a leap of faith, a step of faith, and be born again. So what's the criterion for this? First of all, you must believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. That he was born, crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, ascended into heaven, is God sitting at the right hand of God the Father, in a place of power and majesty from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. He says, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. What will your reward be? If you want everlasting life in heaven, the place or the, the abode of love, the love of God, receive Christ as your Savior and Lord. But if you don't, and you want to continue in evil, and be in torment, and hate, and wickedness for eternity, don't do anything. But if you want Jesus Christ today, I want to lead you in a prayer. Why don't you pray this prayer with me? and receive salvation. Beloved, you must mean it and have a mind to repent. Everyone here today in church is going to be praying along with me. We're going to be praying for you that you receive Christ. Please pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I heard the message today. Heaven, the presence of love, or the abode of love. And God is love. And God is in heaven. I heard the message today, and I want to repent. I believe what the preacher said today. I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. Therefore, I ask you to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. 
I believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of all mankind and the only door to heaven, the only way. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And that nobody could go into the presence of the Father except through him. I believe this today. I believe he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, ascended into heaven, as God sitting at the right hand of God the Father. And from that position, he shall come to judge the dead and the living. I believe that today. I confess that today. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me of all unrighteousness. And I believe by faith, through my confession, my repentance, that Jesus Christ has become my Savior and Lord, and I have been born again. I have become a Christian. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. My beloved, if you said that prayer and meant it from your heart, let me be the first to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Now what I want you to do is go to a Bible preaching, teaching church, get an audience with a pastor, tell him what happened, ask him to pray with you, to pray for you, to anoint you with oil, ask him to baptize you in water by full immersion in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ask him to mentor you, to give you a Bible if you haven't one, and ask him to help you to grow so that you will be able to tell others about Jesus Christ. And they may receive him as their Savior and Lord and go to heaven when they leave this life. Then what I would like you to do is email me at abundant.grace at att.net. You can also contact us through our website at www.abundantgracechurch.net or www.abundantgraceofmelothian.com. You can also follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, just Google us, okay? And you'll find us under Abundant Grace Church of Melothian or Bishop Ramon de Maria. But please, let me hear from you. God bless you, my beloved. And remember, God loves you. Jesus died for you. Amen.